Welcome back everyone. Earlier this week I unboxed and assembled a 3D printer which was sent to me by Gearbest. Now it's time to review it and put it to the test. This is a Tronxy P802MHS acrylic 3D printer. Let's have a look at the machine first. From the front it looks like a stripped down washing machine with all the wires showing and the bare PCB board. Well, this is the final product and how it looks until you decide to cover it with a cardboard box. The most prominent part is the printing table right here which slides back and forth. Underneath this is the heating plate by the way which heats up according to your settings for different printing materials. Then we have the extruder right here. The filament is fed from the top and this nozzle right here extrudes it after heating it up. Again, the extrusion temperature is different for different materials and you have to set it from the software on the PC. There are two fans on this mount, one is for the extruder itself and the other with a pointed vent is for the hot filament which leaves the nozzle. This cools it down immediately to harden it. The extruder is controlled by the motor here. If the printer is not powered on, I can move around all the motors on all the axes manually, but once you switch it on, all the motors get locked and can only be controlled by the software on the computer. The extruder assembly moves up and down on these two screw rods which are controlled by these two motors down here. All the motors have a cutoff trigger switch which stops it from moving any further away from its extreme ends. On the right side is the power supply and on the left side is the PCB board to which all the motors and the switches are connected along with a USB port for PC connection and a micro SD card slot. You can load 3D files onto your memory card, insert it into your printer and print directly from there without the need of a PC connection. On the top is the LCD screen with 5 buttons to change basic settings directly from here. The rest is just metal rods, belts and pieces of acrylic held together by screws and nuts. This is the filament which has to be washed separately. This is PLA plastic which has a standard extrusion temperature of about 200 degrees Celsius. The stand comes with the printer though. The acrylic is pretty brittle by the way so make sure you never drop the printer. I just dropped this empty stand and it cracked in three places. I had to super glue it back together and I'm not sure if you can do the same thing with the printer very well. Once your printer is assembled, it needs some manual adjustments, first of which is the Z-axis leveling. Basically, you have to rotate these two motors by hand to get them exactly at the same level from both sides. You can check the level using a ruler or some kind of a tape. Once you have them aligned, connect it to your computer via the USB cable and install the software that comes along with it in the memory card. It's called Repeater Host. There is also a complete operating guide which shows you how to connect your printer to your PC. After connecting, this button here will turn green. Go to the manual control tab and click down on the Z-axis to bring the extruder down to just about 0.2 millimeters above the printing plate. An A4 size paper should slide between them easily when properly set. Along with this, the guide also includes how to configure the Z-axis cutoff switch so it stops at 0.2 millimeters every time and doesn't go down any further. The printing plate initially came covered with blue painter's tape. I thought it was just for protection so I removed it. But later on I regretted my decision as the tape provides a little bit of extra friction for the first layer of plastic to catch on plus it keeps your metal plate untouched. However, I replaced it with white masking tape and uh, it does an equally good job. Now it's time to start printing. Get a 3D model you want to print. You can design one yourself using something like Fusion 360 or you can get tons of them for free on the internet. I took mine from yegi.com. Open the application Repetier Host and load your file by clicking here. Before we move any further, I want to point out something. Sometimes when you load a file, it will show an orange warning here saying this item is non-manifold and not watertight. This can cause problems in the next step which is slicing and will not print properly. There is an easy way to repair this. Just click on the link in the description below, upload your file and click repair. This is a free service by Microsoft and will fix any issues with your 3D file and prime it for 3D printing. It will produce a .3mf file and you can use another application to convert it back to .stl or .obj which your software Repetier host will accept. Now when I open it again, it won't show any warnings. That means it is ready for slicing. Go to the slicer tab. There are some initial configurations to be done here which are present in the operating guide and I won't get into the detail of it now. Click on the slice with slicer button and it will take a couple of seconds, minutes or hours depending on the render. After slicing, it will display the print stats like estimated time and the filament required. Now from here you can straight away click print or save this G-code file to a memory card and load it straight to your printer. 
Since I need my laptop for the next 2 hours, I am gonna opt for the memory card option. I'll go ahead and save it. Remove the memory card and plug it in the printer. On the printer LCD, I'll first press the center button. I'll come down to memory card. Select my file and then press the right direction button which is basically like an OK button. With that, the printer jumps into action. It moves to its initial position and will start heating the bed first to 55 degrees Celsius which I configured off camera and the extruder to 200 degrees. Once both the bed and the extruder has reached its temperatures, it starts printing. Since this is going to take about 2.5 to 3 hours, I put my camera on time lapse mode and continued with my daily routine. By the way, in the memory card that comes along with the printer, there are two simple 3D files which you can print to test if your printer has been configured and leveled properly. I already did that earlier and what I'm printing right now is one of the most iconic buildings in the world. It is located in downtown Dubai and is the tallest building in the world at a height of 830 meters. It is home to a 5 star hotel, offices as well as residential apartments. Growing up I saw this building being built right in front of me and now it houses the highest point of nightmares for acrophobes. I mean the highest observation deck in the world at 1823 feet high. As well as the spot where you will see some of the best fireworks and light shows at the start of every year. And since it is almost the end of this year, I found it befitting to choose this for my review print. If you still haven't figured it out, this is Burj Khalifa. Burj means tower in Arabic by the way. Anyway, as you can see the print turned out to be pretty decent. It is pretty sturdy and solid, the points are okay. You can see all the individual layers if you look closely. All the points are pretty neat and the detail on this thing is great. It got a bit screwed up around here, it seems like the extruder shifted a bit to the left and then continued from there. And the top is also not that great. But as the famous saying goes, practice makes you perfect, 3D printing is about trial and error. Some of my first prints were even worse. There are a lot of variables involved in a 3D print. The original design, the sliced G-code, extruder speed, infill speed, bed temperature, extruder temperature. You just have to keep tweaking a little here and there until you get the desired results. As for the printer, I'm just loving it. I'm simply amazed at how this technology which seemed so far-fetched to me a couple of years ago has been made so affordable and simple to use. There are limitless possibilities as to what you can do with it. I'll be putting it to more use on my instructables in the future. I've provided a link to the printer as well as the filament below to gearbest.com if you want to check it out. Do let me know in the comments below what you would like to see me print next. If my booth likes your idea, and by that I mean me, I'll print it in a future video or maybe even send it to you, who knows. Now it's time for my ending dialogue. That's it for now guys. If you liked this video, hit that like button below and subscribe to my channel for more gadget reviews, life hacks and facts. Make sure you like my page on Facebook and follow me on Twitter, Google Plus and Instructables. Click on the thumbnails to watch my other videos or check out my YouTube channel for more. And as always, thanks for watching.